today on the TMZ Podcast. Welcome to the TMZ Podcast. Harvey Levin here. And Jason. So uh, we broke the story yesterday that Kim Kardashian and Kanye West have settled their divorce. It did not feel like this was going to happen for all sorts of reasons. Kanye had gone through six lawyers. He was not showing up for depositions. The trial was looming for December 14th. They still need to work out custody and property, and he was not engaging. But we knew secretly uh, Kim's lawyer, Laura Wasser, was trying to engineer some kind of a settlement, and she pulled it off. Um, Kim is getting hammered online right now um, for getting $200,000, which is part of this settlement. Per month. Per month for child support. And everybody's saying, she's a, God, she's a billionaire, and... Why on earth is she getting child support? And what are we talking about with $200,000? Well, it's not so much that Kanye is footing the bill for the kids. He's footing the bill, and I know this sounds insane, everybody, but he's footing the bill for his portion, half of the bill. That the bill is not $200,000. The bill is $400,000, which means a hundred grand a month per kid. I know that sounds insane, And if you want to attack it on that basis, have at it. But it's not that Kim is getting some windfall from Kanye. It's not that she's getting windfall at all. It is interesting to structure it this way. It's interesting to say that they have joint legal custody and that the expectation and physical custody, the expectation being that they would split the kids evenly. No, no, no. But I know. No, that's not true. Oh, is that not the expectation? It says it. It says equal access to the kids, but we know what's behind it. Even Kanye has said Kim has the kids 80% of the time. That's where I was going with this. It's a recognition that she is taking the kids the lion's share of the time. And therefore, if the cost that they've worked out is 400K a month, then he has to pay, he has to give her the 200K a month to make it equal. It's that, still that, no, though. No, that's actually a really good point, and I hadn't thought yeah. of that. It could be that, but at the same time, look. What mm-hmm. I'm told is that they had to tiptoe around Kanye on this thing yes. because he's, you know, off the rails. Yeah. And so, if they said it that way, they put equal access in for a reason. Yep. They wanted Kanye to feel like he had equal access. So it's hard on the one hand to say, yeah, you have equal access, but on the other hand, you pay 80% of the child support because it could set it, him off. It, so you may be right, but I may be right too. Right, right. Or or they just sort of agree. Here's, what, here's what's interesting to me. For months... We have heard about Kanye not participating in settlement negotiations in the mediations they had set right. up, not showing up to the depositions right. once it got that far. The terms of this agreement are pretty simple, right? The equal access, 200K a month is nothing to Kanye, nothing to Kim as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. I have to believe that this could, ha- had he just participated, we could have had this resolution four, oh, five, six months ago. Oh, my God. Without, without too much tr- hand rain, right? There's really no dispute, There's when, no you, dispute. when you think exactly. about it. But here is the, there are two things that I don't want to that that are just deliciously sneaky <laughs> <laughs> that I love, and I have no idea whether Kanye figured this out even. But one of the provisions is that the um, they're going to have some disputes over child child custody. Yes. I mean, it, they just will. And even if this were you know two people who generally get along and everything else. You know, over time, do they go to this school? What do we do about disciplining here? You know, everybody has these sure. issues. If they can't agree, they have said they will go to a mediator and the mediator will hash it out with them. And that part's common. That part's common. Here's what's not. Yeah. That if one party doesn't show, the other party gets his or her way. Right. Okay. Translation, you want to do it? The recognition that Kanye may or may not participate in any of this may throw up roadblocks at every turn when she wants to do something, may say, I don't want my kids doing that. And then, so the provision is to go to mediation, as it often is, but if Kanye doesn't show, it goes forward with Kim's wishes. And Kim knows the history there, yep. and it was a brilliant thing to put in. It really was. The yep. second thing that I find really, really interesting and revealing is that in the property settlement, uh, it says that one of the provisions that they, they had a prenup, so it's all governed by the prenup. Um, and in the property settlement, remember Kanye bought a house right across the street from their family house that Kim now owns. Um, right across the street, it's a it's kind of a a fixer upper house. 
and he wanted it because he wanted to be near the kids, you know, near Kim. He really had not gotten over the divorce. I'm not sure he still has. Yeah, right. But at the time, had not gotten over the divorce. So he buys this house. One of the provisions is you have to sell the house, Kanye. Yeah. You want to translate that? Well, I don't want you that close. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no other translation, right? That was really interesting. It was such a bizarre purchase of the house when it happened, and it seemed so needy, but at the same time aggressive by Kanye to make him know that he's going to be right across the street even if she doesn't want him there. Now, if this were if these were two people who got along and they said, we want to do this to make it easy on the kids where they can just go back yeah. and forth so easily. Tom and Giselle style. E- across the creek, right? Yeah, I'm not sure that that's all kumbaya either. <laughs> well, fair enough, fair enough. But if it's, if it's a couple that does yeah. get along and they really are doing this for the kids and everything else, that might be kind of a cool move. Although I would argue that in no no divorced couple should ever live directly across. Okay, the how about this? Other. How about this? Yeah. You can live next door, no binoculars. <laughs> right, exactly. Does that work? <laughs> that 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 works. Uh, but but I, I think that goes back to it because Kanye is such an aggressive move for him to move directly across the street from Kim. He's going to keep an eye. He said for the kids, but what he's doing is keeping an eye. Well, you on know Kim what there. it's going to do. I mean, she starts dating somebody, exactly, and all hell breaks loose. Oh, all hell is broken loose. Every time she's dated, she dated, dated Pete Davidson, he's threatening Pete Davidson's life, so uh, you this, know, within a week. So the final thing to talk about is this, that when two people have kids, and they have four, um, and they get divorced, they are joined at the hip for the rest of their lives. Right. Whether they're divorced or not, they are joined at the hips. There are going to be graduations. There are going to be birthdays. There are going to be weddings. There's going to be childbirth. There will be deaths. There are going to be all holidays, all sorts of things, and they will always be joined at the hip. So that they need, and this is such an important thing, you need a structure in this kind of an agreement, especially when you're dealing with somebody difficult. You need a structure, and you need a safety net. And Kim and Laura Wasser, I think, really created that safety net. This is a really interesting settlement that accounts for the instability of Kanye West yep. in a way that didn't trigger him to the point that he wouldn't sign the settlement. Right. And I think that was a tightrope act, and I think it was pretty brilliant. It pretty brilliant. You need somebody the experience of Laura Wasser who's dealt with large money celebrity divorces in the past, know how to navigate these things. I'm not sure she's ever dealt with somebody quite like Kanye West before. Nobody it was probably has. a challenge for her, yeah. uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure it was a challenge for her. But she got there, and, and Kim got there. One thing I think we need to be clear about is that if Kanye goes further off the rails, start asking, acting more manically, whatever it might be, she can obviously go back in and change the custody agreement. They're oh, not set in stone. You can always go in and, and right. if there are changed circumstances or if there is a fitness issue with one of the parents, you can absolutely go in. Right. Uh, that happened with Britney Spears and Kevin Federline, where when Britney was going off the rails, uh, she lost custody. Yeah. And first, it was you need supervised cust- You need supervised visitation. Then they required drug testing, and then she lost it, and then got it back once the conservatorship started. So yes, this is an evolving thing. I think the optimist would say, now that this is done, maybe Kanye can start to to normalize a little ah. bit, at least with respect to his kids and his ex wife. Whether he's going to continue hanging out with Nick Fuentes, I think that's going to be that's going to keep on going for a while, and that sort of wacky, wacky stuff. I, I'm I, I was with you yeah. until you just said that. Were you just saying it to say it, or did you actually believe that shit? That that <laughs> what he's going to keep hanging out with Nick? That, Fuentes? No, the hope is that Kanye's. Gonna... No, I think I think Kim's hope in in, in getting the settlement Jason, done is that Jason. Kanye. Obviously, he has the, the, he loves his kids, and the, the, no, he and, does love his kids. And for the sure. fact that this has been out there, I think, has taken a toll on him. No, you give you give no quarter for this at all. Oh my god! <laughs> like, what's less than zero? All right, all uh, right. Okay, let's move on to gay marriage. This is interesting. The clock is ticking in Washington D.C. The Republicans are going to control the House uh, in January, and um, the uh, the right to um, to marry if you're gay, is on the chopping block at the U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, so we, we have the, obviously the Dobbs case comes down, which changes, which uh, d- gives back to the states the right to uh, illegalize abortion. And so there was a lot of talk that this might also extend to gay marriage and to other things as well. And so uh, Senator Tammy Baldwin, I was reading about this today, uh, about four or five months ago, approaches fellow Repo- approaches Republicans she knew believed in the protections of same-sex marriage. Months later, 
uh, the House of Representatives actually first passes a Protection of Marriage Act. Now, we should explain what that is. Yeah. That doesn't mean you have a federal right to get married. Right. It means that in – so the federal government cannot control what a state does in terms of marriage. So they can't require Alabama to allow gay marriage in their state. However and, – and, and that's a structural thing about our government. Correct. And that's federalism and the rights of states to control certain things. Right. And that's always been the case and never been challenged. What – they said what what this bill does is says okay we're not gonna we can't can't require Alabama to allow uh, same sex marriage but what we can do is require Alabama to recognize another state's legal marriage of a gay couple. So in other words, Alabama doesn't allow gay marriage. If two people from California get married, um, gay people get married, and then they move to Alabama. Alabama has to treat them the same as a straight married give couple. Give them all the tax rights, give them all the visit uh, the child care uh, child adoption rights. And not only it's not just a, a couple that moves to Alabama, importantly, it's a couple who's an Alabama resident who move who, who take a vacation to California or to lots of Las other Vegas. states, but wherever. Yeah. Uh, and get Well, I'm not sure about Nevada actually. I, I think Nevada is most states do have well, in any event, you you move, you fly to California, you get married in California, your Alabama citizens, you move back, you, you go home, you are now married in the eyes of the law of Alabama, and Alabama can't do you anything to You get married somewhere, that. every state has to recognize That's it. right. It's called the full faith and credit clause in the Constitution. So um, the House of Representatives passed that. The Senate last night uh, passed its own version. It was the same version, really, but they added something, and it had to do with religion. Yeah, so it added a provision that says that a, a religious organization, a church, does not have to marry a gay couple. And it, that was important to, so 12 Republicans, importantly, 12 Republican senators joined with the full full slate of Democrats in the Senate to pass this bill. Those 12 Senate, uh, uh, Republican senators said, well, well, wait a minute, we'll agree to this. However, we want to make sure that a Christian church that does not believe in gay marriage, does not honor gay marriage, does not, is not required to offer marital services to a gay couple. And so the Democrats agreed. Some are very upset, and some House members have spoken out about this, but you got to get the bill passed. And they didn't want to lose this. Because to your and, point, the uh, Democrats are going to lose the House. Yeah, and the reality is that was a compromise, but there are a million ways around that obstacle because there are plenty of places. For example, in California, there might be right. some churches that won't allow it, but there are so many places you can get married, even City Hall, that it's— that. Let it, me ask you a question real quick. G gay man— how do you feel? Well, about are you calling me gay man or are you calling I'm me Harvey? Alerted, I'm alerting. I'm <laughs> alerting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you feel about the church's right to dis uh, allowing religious organizations to discriminate against gay people in this way? Well, look, I mean, I, you know, I, I obviously I disagree with it. At the same time, you know, look. I want to be able to live my life the way I want to live my life if I'm not hurting somebody else. Yeah. Um, and if, you know, somebody in California wants to get married, they can. Now, they're, and, and, and suppose you're in a state where there's one church or whatever that just doesn't allow it. You know, I mean, it, it's very complicated to me because, you know, what if this were a racial issue that a church said I won't allow black people in? Yeah. And, you know, I, we wouldn't tolerate that. It's not black people in because that would be against federal law. But no, no, but I'm, but but I'm to, asking. To get married. You, you asked me, you asked way, me about yeah. my personal feelings. Yeah. And I'm saying on that level, it's, you know, unthinkable that 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 would be OK. Yet for them to say that a gay person can't get married in this church, what's the real difference? And I suppose if I had to answer my own question, the difference could be that in their religion, that's an issue being black isn't. And look, I mean, I kind of subscribe to Biden's principle that, you know, you compromise where you can still get that right. And even if it's not 100 percent, it's progress. Right. And that you make progress over time. So I'm OK with it because I think it's significant progress and protection, especially with what the Supreme Court may be doing. And that does loom. So does it bother me? Yeah. At the same time, look, I'm not going to tell you have to believe um, a certain way in your it. religion because there is a protection of religion in our Constitution. Yeah. And if you have a protection of religion, you have to align that with my rights, too. Yeah. And so I think it's more complicated than saying one person's automatically right and one person's automatically wrong. I think the compromise is fine. 
and it's progress. Yeah, I just sort of think that there are going to be people who hate and are discriminate, discriminatory, and as long as there are other ways for all people, whether it be black people or gay people or whomever, to achieve the rights they want, which is to get, in this case we're talking about, to get married, we don't want to fight that fight. I hate it. I hate allowing anybody to discriminate. But it shouldn't be all or nothing. In other words, but right. if, if, if but you say, no, we're not going to accept that part, so we're not going to provide well, any that's, protection. Be silly. Well, no, no, but yeah. that's what that's part of what the extremes yeah. in Congress have been doing. And it's not about getting 100% or 0%. It's making progress. Right. And that's that should be the North Star. That should be the North Star, without question. And this is, this. It, it, you, you mentioned very briefly, the Supreme Court could unravel this entire thing on us. I, I don't think they will. But it, it's hard to look at this as anything. But, I don't know, but I don't know you're right about that, by the way. Well, they could. I mean, I mean they, what if the Supreme Court says, you know, we believe in the federalist system to this extent that you cannot force well you do have a full faith and credit uh, but you know, they can interpret the full faith and credit clause somewhat it, it, differently exactly than, than so i'm not sure it's a slam dunk that this is protection but i think but we'll see I, I i think it goes a long way and it's a really really good day it's a really it's good a day. really good day but uh, th- this is going to go back to the house the house <clears throat> presumably will approve yeah the, uh, the the way the senate did it because you need a, you need alignment and then it goes to the death to the president and he will sign it that's right and also could be unraveled by the next congress as well or two Congresses. It's not going to be unraveled by the next Congress. Well, the Democrats hold the Senate, but they might not hold it in 2024. And then well, it, I'm just saying, in the short term, yes. um, this is protected. Yes. Right. See you tomorrow.